Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. In John chapter 9 and verse 31. Would you read it, please? Now we know that God does not hear what? Sinners. But if anyone is a what? Worshipper of God and what? Does his will. So you know that a worshiper of God, a true worshiper of God is going to do his will. He hears him. So there's two things. Worship and do his will. Worship and do his will. So many people are going, Lord, when are you going to answer me? And he says, I have. It's no. Yeah, but, no but ministry. He's waiting for the fullness of worship and to do the will. Not our will, his will. Verse 32. Since the world began, it has been unheard of that anyone opened the eyes of one who was born blind. If this man were not from God, he could not do nothing. They answered and said to him, you were completely born in sins and are you now teaching us? And they cast the man out. Now this man was in front of the Sanhedrin, the religious dudes. Jesus healed him. He was blind. Jesus told him to go wash. When he washed, Jesus was gone. And so everybody knew that this man was born blind. And when they brought him before the Sanhedrin, the religious dudes all robed up. You know, they did the ho, 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 ho. And the says, the You know, they did the religious acts and dressed nice, sat in front, make sure, you know, whatever. Oh, they stood up in the corners, you know. They were the first ones to stand up and the last ones to sit down to be recognized. Hallelujah. They were full of religion. Yet they couldn't see. They couldn't see. Watch what Jesus says to them. Watch. In, in verse 35. So anyways, here this guy's telling the Sanhedrin, yeah, well, you know, hey, look, at it. the dude healed me. What can I tell you? And they said, get out of here. You're trying to teach us? I mean, you can't tell a religious spirit anything. They know it all. In verse 35. Then Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when he had found him, he said to him, do you believe in the Son of God? And he answered and said, who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said to him, you have both seen him, and it is he who is talking with you. Then he said, Lord, I believe. And he what? Worshipped him. He what? He worshipped him. He didn't care who was looking, did he? Oh, somebody's watching me worship. My God, what will people think? And Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world, that those who do not see may what? See. And that those who see may be made what? Blind. Then some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and said to him, Are we blind also? And Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say we see. Therefore your sin remains. In other words, you are blind. <laughs> Even though you say you see, you're still blind. <laughs> many, who, <laughs> many who say that they see are blind. And many blind now see. The more you drink, the more you see. Many have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. There's many believers who have been baptized in the Holy Spirit and have been trapped with limitations of worship. They can only go ankle deep and stop. This causes limitations, causes limited sight and limited functions in the body of Christ. They become more soulish and selfish and worldly pleasures are motivated in a greater way. More things are motivated according to the world than fulfilling their function in the body and fellowship of believers. 
they become more complacent. Well, they come and do their duty. Hello? They come and do their what? Duty. I better go do my duty. It's duty night. We don't come to do our duty. We come to surrender. We come to bless him. It's not a duty. It's a responsibility. Everybody got it? It's a responsibility. Why? Because if you know what pleases him, you do it. It's not a duty. You want duty, go to Disneyland. There's a lot of duty going on there. Hallelujah. You'll get it later. Romans 1. <laughs> a lot of howdy duty too. <laughs> Hallelujah. True worshipers. River people. Glory to God. You know, when Friday night comes along, it's like, oh man, I don't feel good. Oh, you know, I got this. Oh, I got this. Oh, I, oh, ah, oh, e. Hey, listen, the enemy's not stupid. He knows that if he can prevent you from drinking and getting filled from the river of life, he can deceive you. He can blind you. You know, when you get that complacent. I mean, you know, listen, we missed, we, we missed one Friday night. Man, let me tell you, I didn't like it. And you can tell, you get back to that Friday night by missing one Friday night. It's like, whoa, man, I miss this. Why? Because of the open worship, just the freedom and the longevity that you can die more. See, the more you worship, the more you die. You're sometimes wrestling with the angel of the Lord. So if you leave a service limping, you'll know why. You lost. The Father is looking for true worshipers. The Bible says the anointing breaks the yoke. Let me tell you, we got to come out of these limitations of worship. It's infiltrated the body of Christ in a mighty way. Where people become complacent and religious. They're more concerned about their jobs and everything else instead of worshiping their king. And they have step. Jesus didn't have step. You know, he could have went to the cross and said, hold on a second, I'll be back in 15,000 more years. <laughs> you know where we be then. <laughs> Romans 1, verse 20. Read it, please. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, the birds and the four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the what? Creature or creation rather than the creator who was blessed forever. Amen. So we see that worshipers, there are worshipers of creation. Let me tell you, there's a lot of new age that worship green leaves. There's a lot of programs that worship light bulbs, doorknobs. You know, they just, oh, just worship anything. It, this is called your higher power. Well, most people's higher power is a demon and don't even know it. They worship 
They're worshipers of creation instead of creator. They carry a form of worship, but their confidence is more in the flesh. Does everybody carry this? Carry it. Carry it. Carry it. This is important. Wrap it around you. Let it impart in you. Let it penetrate, penetrate right into your spirit. They carry a form of worship, but their confidence is more in the flesh. Acts 17. That is not a true worshiper. Do you run to the phone or to the throne? <laughs> Hello? Glory. Better hit the throne first before you hit the phone because it could backfire. Did you ever talk to somebody? Man, they're all excited. Yeah, man, I love the Lord. I, man, you kidding? I'll do anything for them. They come to a worship service. They last 15 minutes. Man, I thought you said you love the Lord. I do. Well, where are you going? Well, what do you mean? I did my duty. <laughs> oh. You're a howdy duty, huh? Praise God. Well, I got things to do. Yes, I know you do. Your confidence is more in the flesh. Remember, the Father is seeking true worshipers. Everybody okay? Yeah. Acts 17, 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of the Arpagius and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. I love Paul. He's, he, he, you know, him and Peter, man, they don't give a hoot. They're like, yo, here it is. Take it or leave it. For as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, <laughs> I love how he says this. You know those things like sports players? You know, Macy's, Coles, movie stars, uh, uh, Disneyland goers, Domino's pizzas, Pepsi, you know, stuff like that. You know those areas of objects of worship? You know, uh, your family. Areas of objects of worship, your job. Areas of objects of worship, your bank account, your future. What if? God forbid. For as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, I even found at an altar with this inscription, the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I'm going to proclaim to you. God who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in the temples made with hands, nor is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. And he, may, and he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and boundaries of their dwellings so that they should seek the Lord. Say, seek the Lord. In what? In hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offsprings. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone or something shaped by art and man's devising. Truly these times of ignorance God has overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. 
because he has appointed a day when he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. 